Ladies and gentlemen, The Promise. The Promise is an epic contemporary musical drama on the life of Christ, presented as a live theater experience. Our story begins right here in Glen Rose, Texas, on the Paluxy River. Grandpa, Billy, and Lisa are out hiking when Billy spots dinosaur tracks. And then the magic begins. Oh, it's a beautiful night on the Paluxy River, isn't it? Wow, uh, Grandpa, here's another dinosaur track. Yes, I believe you're right, Billy. They're everywhere in this riverbed. Yeah. Is this one? No, I don't think that's one, Billy, but go down a little further, right there on the riverbank. Now there might be another one. Wow, we're walking right where they walk. Right, and if you had been there thousands of years ago... I'd have been squished. Yes, you would have. And just yes. look how big the tracks are. They were taking giant steps. Yes, and those dinosaurs were making deep tracks in this old dry riverbed that have outlasted storms and winds and thousands of years. Oh, Grandfather, just look. Isn't it magnificent? Oh, honey, this uh, part of Texas and Somerville County, they're just beautiful. God's masterpiece. I wish Mom and Dad and Grandma could have come with us. Well, I do too, honey, but you know, they had to take those things over to Aunt Bess since Uncle George died, she's been real lonesome. It's just so beautiful. Yes, it Look is. Look at this! Did you find another one, Billy? No, but it looks like an old graveyard. Yeah, must be abandoned. Looks pretty old to me. 1893. Yeah. 1894. Uh-huh. What did people die of those days, Grandpa? Well, Billy, they died of things like uh, consumption. And they died of things like uh, the whooping cough and the measles. Measles. Nobody dies of the measles. Well, they did then, and an occasional bullet wound, too. Yeah, now that can happen today. Oh, yeah. Oh, Billy, don't be so rude. I think it's sad, Grandfather. Nobody seems to care. Oh, I'm sure they cared, Lisa, but you know, uh, they uh, moved on down the country or got sick and died themselves, you know. Oh, look. That one was just a baby, and I think it's sad. There's so much to live oh, for. Oh, I know it, honey. But there was one baby that was so special that God sent him as a promise. A promise? Yes. In fact, people had waited on him for centuries. No. Really? Yeah, Billy. In fact, he was the most expected baby there ever was. Great men called prophets foretold his coming. And women in his family tree hoped that they would be chosen as his mother. Oh, I know who you're talking about. Yes, and one of his names was the promised one. In fact, I've got a song, and I think you know it. We can go sing it. Come on, Billy, let's all go up here on the rocks here, and we'll just sing about it a little bit, all right? Oh, let's get this old guitar tuned up. There we go. All right, here we go. Bit. A promise is a promise, especially from the Lord. We know he can be trusted to keep his written word. For when we wait with patience, the hope within us grows. And as we trust his timing, All right, sing it with me. A day is like one thousand in God's own view of time. The waiting and the longing are part of God's design. God is a God.
his words can just a minute, Billy. be trusted. What God has said, he'll do. What is it, Billy? What is it, boy? Oh, oh, look. Look. I will raise to David a righteous branch, and he will reign and prosper as king. And his name will be called the Lord our righteousness. He will be born to a virgin, and his name will be called Emmanuel, God with us. He will know to refuse evil and choose good. In Bethlehem, in the clan of Judah, shall come a ruler of Israel, and he will be great unto the ends of the earth. He shall be meek and lowly, but his kingdom will have no end. His dominion will be from sea to sea to the ends of the earth. What God has said. Well, Billy, those were the prophets I was telling you about. God has given a constant promise all down through the ages. And the best part is it came true. And it began with a baby. Jesus, right? You're right, Billy. The angel Gabriel came to a young Jewish virgin named Mary and told her that she would bear the Son of God. Can you just imagine how she must have felt? I'd have been scared, yeah. not me. I think it would have been wonderful. Oh, will you tell us the rest of the story, Grandpa? I just <clears throat> love the way you tell it. Well, please, and we can build a fire. It's a little late, now, but please. Please. okay. Well, they're going to be over there, Aunt Bessie's, for a while. All right. Well, look, there's a uh -huh. fire over here. Started. Let's, let's bring them over here, and uh, we'll just get this going, and we'll tell a story, and we'll just have a great time. Billy, bring yours over here. Blow on that thing a little bit. Get that fire going. There we go, there we go. All right. <clears throat> now, you remember how the story began. And it came to pass that Caesar Augustus set forth a decree that all should be taxed. And of course, Joseph, being in the line and lineage of David, had to go to Bethlehem. And there with his espoused wife, his, with, great with child, oh, Mary's heart must have burst with joy. But our going has been slow. Yes. My wife is near the time of her delivery. Oh, you yeah. can stay here for the night. Thank you. But we must be in Bethlehem. But, Grandpa, there won't be a place for them Whoa, to Whoa, Billy, shh, Billy, shh. Your baby is so special. How do you know that? Oh, I just know. We've waited for him for a long time. He must be very happy. Oh, yes. We're very happy and filled with the wonder of the Lord. I will rejoice in thee, O Lord, and shout salvation's praise in mighty power. I will rejoice in thee, O Lord, so let the angry of the I will sing glory.
<laughs> but, Grandpa, there won't be a place for them to stay. Oh, Billy, I know that. In fact, Bethlehem was just cram-packed with all of those visitors coming for the census. But the innkeeper did show them the way to his stable. Yes, and there Joseph made for Mary uh, on a bed of straw for her to sleep, yes. And he put fresh hay in the manger to make a bed for the new baby, too. That's right. And there amid the animals, on that bed of straw, a miracle came to pass. The promised one was born. And there out on those fields at night, the shepherds watching over their flock by night were the first to hear the good news. Do not be afraid, I have good news for everyone. Grandpa? Yes, and it was beautiful then, but things didn't go too smoothly after that. What happened next, Grandpa? Well, those kingly visitors that brought those uh, frankincense, myrrh, and gold to the newborn king of the Jews, 
Well, it didn't make old Herod, the old king of the Jews, very happy. And so he ordered that all male babies in Bethlehem under two years of age be massacred. I mean killed, every one of them in Bethlehem. <laughs> It was just horrible. And you know, but an angel came and warned Joseph to take Mary and that newborn babe uh, and flee Bethlehem by night before those soldiers could come to Bethlehem with those slashing swords. Well, they lived down in Egypt for a while. And uh, down there, after they were there for a while, old King Herod died. Well, then an angel came to Joseph while they were there and directed them that they should go back to Nazareth. And there Jesus grew up in Nazareth in his father's carpenter shop, probably Billy with a little dust in his hair and blisters on his hands. Yeshua! Ah, oh, my son. Children. Children, run along now. Run along. Yeshua, we leave for Jerusalem in just a few weeks now. Do you feel prepared for your examination before the leaders in the temple? Yes, Father, I know the lessons very well. But I am more concerned about what will happen beyond Jerusalem in the months and the years that are ahead. Your purpose is a special one, my son. Your mother and I have always known that. But you must trust that God will reveal His purposes to you directly and in His timing. Father, tell me again about the night that I was born. Did the angels really sing? Ah, yes, and I shall never forget. Some called you prophet, some called you for you were a baby who made angels see. When I remember the night of the star, I praise God for all that you Can't explain the mystery that your life contains. Anointed 
right, Father? Yes, my son. Joseph, Yeshua, it's time for the evening meal. Coming, Mother. Surely you realize that I must now be about my father's business. Oh, yes. And Jesus grew both tall and wise and was loved by God and man alike. And when he was about 30, he began his father's business in a new way. And his coming was foretold by John the Baptist. Repent! conduct. There's one coming after me who is mightier than I. So repent. Prepare the way of the Lord. I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. I tell you, every ravine shall be filled up. Every mountain and every hill shall be brought low. The crooked shall become straight and the rough road shall be made smooth, and all of mankind shall see the salvation of God. So repent and be baptized. Let your life prove out your change of heart. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent and be baptized. Let your life prove out your change of heart. I baptize you in water, but he who comes after me, he shall baptize you in the Holy Spirit and in fire. The Messiah is coming! You brood of vipers! Who has warned you to flee your den before it is burnt by the fire of God? And do not be so presumptuous as to think that you shall be spared simply because Abraham is your forefather! Ah! Axe is already laid at the root of your tree! No! It is not right that you should come to me! It is I who should be baptized by you. Permit this, John, so that we both might do what is right in the Father's eyes. is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world! (laughs) 
Immediately following this, Jesus was led into the wilderness by the Spirit of God. And there, he was there, well, nearly six weeks. Uh, Billy was like 40 days and 40 nights. And he was there with that hot sun beaming down with him in that desert and those sands coming through his toes during the day. And then at night, all he had were those cold stones to lay his head on. And those wild animals were out there hollering. And he was alone, but he wasn't alone. And then the old tempter came, Satan himself. Jesus, are you hungry? If you are the Son of God, then why not turn one of these stones into bread? It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by the word that comes from the mouth of God. The pinnacle of the temple then. You could throw yourself down from there. And if you are indeed God's only son, then his angels would come and lift you up just in time. It is written that the Lord God is not to be tempted. All the power and all the kingdoms of all this world are mine. And I will give them to you if you will only bow down to me. Away from me, Satan. The Lord God alone shall be worshipped and obeyed. The Lord God alone. Well, things really began to happen then. Jesus uh, began his teaching, and people began following him. And then he called out of those people following Andrew, Peter, James, and John. Twelve in all, they were called his apostles. Well, here they are now. Andrew, Andrew, catch the line. How was the catch, Peter? Incredible. I don't think I've ever seen such a catch. I had to get James and John to help. I don't know where all the fish came from. The fish just seem to have leaped into the boat. Look at all of the fish. I've never seen anything like it, Andrew. <laughs> Master! Master! I'm so unworthy of all of this. But if you'll follow me, Peter, you will learn how to fish for men. Look at him there. Sun in his hair, soon he will wear a crown. Born for this hour, he will seize power and bring all our enemies down. Look at his eyes, gentle and wise, heaven is in his face, and in his tongue. Coming, the one we have waited for. I see the kingdom coming on earth. Soon we will call him Lord. I see the kingdom coming. He's what we have waited for. I see the kingdom coming in him. That's why I call him Lord. Lift up the gate. I cannot wait. Bring on his earthly reign. He will rule the land, bring our people again. Look at me now. Difference of power, and all because of him. Much more at ease. Searching for real peace and finding the joy within. I 
the kingdom coming, the one we have waited for. I see the kingdom coming on earth, soon we will call him Lord. I see the kingdom coming, it's what we have waited for. I see the kingdom coming in him, that's why I call him What must we do next? The people are looking for you. Let us go into the towns nearby, so that I may teach there, for that is what I came to do. Go, bring the people. I see the kingdom coming, the one we have waited for. I see the kingdom coming on earth, soon we will call him Lord. I see the kingdom coming, it's what we have waited for. I see the kingdom coming in him, that's why I call him Lord. Soon we will call him Lord. I see the kingdom, I see the kingdom, I see the Are you poor in spirit today? Then blessed are you. For when you know you are poor in spirit, then the Father can begin to fill you up and fill you to overflowing with the good things of His kingdom. And are you mourning today? Then blessed are you. You are in the very position you need to be for the Father to pour out His comfort to you. And to those of you who come before him with meek hearts, yours is the inheritance of the whole earth. You are blessed. Yes, you shall inherit all the earth. Blessed are you. And are you hungry and thirsty today for the things of God? Then you shall be filled. Blessed are you. Yes, blessed are you. The very things you lack are the things the Father wants to provide for you today. And to those of you who are merciful, you will receive mercy. And to those of you who are pure in heart, you shall see God. And to those of you who are peacemakers, you shall be called the children of God. And to those of you being persecuted because of your good works for God's kingdom, I declare to you today that yours is the kingdom of heaven. For whatever you suffer on his account, great will be your rewards in heaven. So rejoice, I say. Be glad. Be exceedingly glad, for you are blessed. But Master, how can this be? What you teach seems like such a contradiction. Will we ever be able to understand it clearly? You do not see, you do not understand it now. You look for signs, you search the skies above. Yet I say again, my kingdom is within, whereby my spirit I will reign in love. Closer than a heartbeat, I will be to you. Closer than a heartbeat in everything you do. Nearer than the breath you take when you sleep and when you wake. Never, never to forsake my own. And I'll be closer than a heartbeat, closer than a heartbeat, for your heart will be my home. For like a seed that's sown into the fallow ground, becomes a tree with branches wide and strong. 
I will sow in you a love that grows and blooms and fills your silent spirit with my song. Children, would you come to me? Closer than a heartbeat, I will be to you. Closer than a heartbeat in everything you do. Nearer than the breath you take when you sleep and when you wake. Never, never to forsake my own. And I'll be closer than a heartbeat. Closer than a heartbeat for your heart. Be my home. I'll be closer than a heartbeat, closer than a heartbeat, for your heart will be my. You are called to be the salt of the earth, and you are called to be light, to show the way of God like a city built on a hill and like a candle on a candle stand. These people can't be salt and light. They're unwashed, unlearned, unqualified. It is our role to be the moral light of this generation. And whoever would come to God must come as a little child without pride, eager to receive God's love and to follow His commandments. What do they know about the commandments? They haven't studied the law. They are empty-headed fools. <laughs> and I say to you that those who speak insultingly of their brothers, those who have anger and bitterness in their hearts, cannot stand before God. First, make peace with your brothers and then present your gifts to God. What do they know of giving? We give a tithe of everything. We even tithe of the mint that, that grows in our garden. For the Father does not want only your gifts. He wants all of you, your life and your love, and your love given to others. Sir, what is the most important command in all the law of Moses? The first and principal one is this. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and strength. But there is a second one equal to it. You must love your neighbor as yourself. All the other commandments and all the demands of the prophets stem from these two laws and are fulfilled if you obey them. He challenges the authority of the law. He violates the Sabbath. He seeks to discredit us. We must silence him. Jesus, Jesus, I am Nicodemus, a Pharisee and a member of the Sanhedrin. I am one of the most powerful men in Jerusalem, and yet I, I am convinced by your miracles that, that you are a teacher sent from God. But Master, tell me, how can a man experience this, this kingdom of God? You must be willing to be born again, Nicodemus. For unless you are born again, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. What do you mean? Can an old man such as I enter his mother's womb and be born again? Born of the Spirit, Nicodemus. Spirit born of Spirit, just as the physical is born of the physical. Don't be so astonished. The wind breathes across the earth, and we cannot tell where it begins or ends. 
And so it is with the mystery of God who breathes into our spirits a new life. But how? You are a great teacher of Israel and you don't know. It will be to those who see the Son of God lifted up on a cross and who will believe in Him. For they are the ones who will never perish but have eternal life. God did not send His Son to judge or condemn men, but to lead them to salvation, to a newness of life. For God so loves this world, Nicodemus, that He gives His only begotten Son, that whoever would believe on Him would never die, but live forever. Well, the people just couldn't believe what they were hearing. They had always understood that Jehovah God was a God of wrath and of vengeance. And here this gentle teacher was teaching them that Jehovah was a God of love and peace and joy. Makes me want to get up and stand and dance. He is Jehovah, God of creation. He is Jehovah, Lord God Almighty, the bomb of Gilead, the rock of ages. He is Jehovah, the God that healeth thee. He is the great I am, the God of Abraham, Jehovah Shalom. Still. Why were you so afraid? What has happened to your faith? What kind of a man is it that even the wind and the seas obey his voice? That was really something. Yes, every day was exciting in Jesus' life. In fact, he had trouble finding time to rest and to pray because the people just loved him so much, Billy. They just swarmed to him everywhere he went. Well, look, here we are in the marketplace. Let's listen. The crowds have lined the narrow street. To see this man from Galilee, just a carpenter, some say, leading fools astray, yet many kneel to give him praise, and in his eyes they glimpse the power that's 
was caught in the act of adultery. The law of Moses requires that we stone such a woman. Now tell us, what do you say? Yes, tell us, Rabbi, what is your answer? All right, stone her then. But whoever among you is without sin, let him cast the first stone. Woman, where are your accusers? Has no one condemned you? No, my Lord. Then neither do I. Go your way and sin no more. There is strength in Unclean spirit. What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? Please don't torment me. What is your name? We are many. What is your name? Legion. Legion. Come out. Please don't send us away.
You see, the more miracles Jesus performed, the more that the religious leaders hated him. And the more that Jesus taught, the more that they thought he was teaching against them. So finally, they started plotting to do away with him. This Jesus of Nazareth begins to worry me. The crowds are growing every day. Yes, he does miraculous things. At a wedding he attended in Cana of Galilee, they say he turned water into wine. A mere trick. Why any magician could do as much. You've heard what he is preaching, Nicodemus. The kingdom of God, he says. But have you noticed how he leaves us out? Yes, the implications are very clear. We must stop him. We do not. Everyone will believe on him. But does our law condemn a man without first hearing him to, to find out what he's been doing? <laughs> Why, Nicodemus, are you from Galilee too? <laughs> Surely you must know no prophet shall come from Galilee. This man seeks to discredit us, and he must be silenced. His latest story is about a great banquet with many guests invited. But the rich ones give excuses. And the invitation is thrown wide open to those who grovel in the streets. And, and the one about the leaven in the loaf? He uses leaven in two ways, you realize. Yes, and when he says, beware of the leaven in the loaf, about whom do you think he is speaking, Nicodemus? I think you're reading too much into his words. Well, if you discount what he is saying, Nicodemus, surely you can't discount what he is doing. Uh, hardly. Why, Joshua was there to see him stop midway in his teaching in the synagogue to call out to a woman. A woman! And on the Sabbath day. On the Sabbath? She had been crippled for almost 18 years. Why, everybody knew her. But with this, Jesus stretched forth his hands and touched her. Immediately she straightened up. And you should have heard what happened next. She started praising God and, and dancing about. On the Sabbath and in the synagogue. And you should have heard how the people joined her. It completely disrupted the gathering. What did the synagogue ruler do? Well, he tried to stop the commotion, of course. He reminded this Jesus that there are six days of the week that he could be doing his healing work and that he did not need to be doing it on the Sabbath. And? Jesus called him a hypocrite. Can you imagine it? A hypocrite for upholding the sanctity of the Sabbath. This man is more dangerous than I thought. What other signs does he do? Healings. Why, the reports are far too numerous to mention. He cleansed ten lepers up north, healings that have been verified by the rabbis there. It's what he says he is going to do that is more troublesome. Such as? He says he is going to destroy the temple and build it again in three days. And the people actually believe him? You should see how they follow him. Hundreds, thousands, almost any place that he appears. Who does he think he is, Messiah? Opposing the priests, disregarding the Sabbath. He's got to be stopped. Exactly. Do you not realize what we must do? It is better one man die than a whole nation perish. Our chance is soon approaching. Jesus will surely come to Jerusalem for the Passover. We will make our move then. <laughs> well, they were very angry, and the word was getting back to Jesus and his disciples of how angry they really were. Well. Well, here they come now. Let's let the disciples have our fire. I'm concerned about Lazarus. Well, I also, Matthew. But Jesus does not seem to be concerned. He plainly said it's a disease that will not end in death. But still, Martha would not have sent a messenger if he were gravely ill. Well, I think it's better we don't go at all. Remember the last time we were in Judea? We were nearly stoned. Master. Master, I heard what you said again today about the kingdom of God and how it belongs to the poor. But I've never heard of a kingdom belonging to the poor. It's always the rich and powerful who rule kingdoms. And so the Father is, Peter. 
So how is it the wealth and power of that kingdom is going to be transferred here to us? You said today there were those who heard you speaking who would not die before they saw the kingdom established, so it must be soon. Yes, it will be soon. <laughs> so here we are around this campfire with what, Judas? Enough coins in your purse for three or four days' provisions? Now that's hardly enough to establish a kingdom, much less hold on to it. The kingdom is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his garden. It grew and became a tree, one so large that birds could build nests in its branches. And the kingdom is like the yeast, which a woman took and mixed into this flour, until it was worked evenly throughout the dough. So how is it the kingdom is going to be established, seeds growing and bread rising? What must we do to make it happen? Don't worry about these things, Peter. Just as I have told you not to worry about your very life, what you're going to eat and what you're going to wear. Do you remember the ravens we saw yesterday? And the lilies in bloom across the hill? The ravens don't sow or reap. They don't even have a storehouse of food, yet they are fed. And the lilies? <laughs> Why, even King Solomon wasn't dressed so fine. So if God takes care of the birds of the air and the grasses of the field, how much more will he take care of you? The world is concerned about building kingdoms, Peter. The Father has already established his. You must seek to enter it and to encourage others to join you. Then tell us what's going to happen to signal the arrival of the kingdom. Peter, The Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priests and teachers of the law. He will be condemned to death and turned over to the Gentiles. And he will be mocked and flogged and crucified. Crucified, Lord? Yes, Peter. But he will rise again on the third day. Peter. Peter. You are so concerned about leadership. Who to lead, how to lead, when to lead. What are the people saying about me? <laughs> Some are saying that you're John the Baptist and that you never really died. Then there are others who say you're some prophet that's come back to life. Elijah, maybe. Then there are those who say you're Jeremiah. But what do you say, Peter? You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. You are blessed, Peter. For my Father in heaven has revealed this to you. And it is upon that statement that I will build my church and the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. The Son of Man will die, but He will rise again so that all the world might know that He is the Christ and that He lives. Master, it's late, and I can't handle any more talk of this death and die. Besides, it's a fine way to establish a kingdom for its leader to die. But it will happen, Peter. Not if I can help it. Satan, get thee behind me. Well, then something happened, Billy, that uh, really concerned the religious leaders. You might say, it was the match that lit the fuse. What was it, Grandpa? Well, it was about a close friend of Jesus and the disciples. His name was Lazarus, and he got real sick, and he died. Martha. 
he will rise again. Yes, Lord, in the resurrection. But I am the resurrection and the life, Martha. And whoever believes in me, even though he might die physically, he will never cease to live. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord. I believe. I have believed. And I will always believe that you are the Messiah. <laughs> Sister. <laughs> he must have loved Lazarus a great deal. <laughs> Take away the stone. The Lord has been dead for days. Martha. Didn't I promise that if you would only believe that you would see the glory of God? Father, I thank you that you have always heard me. I say this not because I doubt you now, but for the sake of these your children standing here with me that they might believe that I am your messenger. Lazarus, come out. Lazarus, come forth.
time for the showdown had come. But Jesus hadn't done anything wrong. Well, Billy, that's one thing that we humans just can't stand. Were they jealous? Oh, yes, honey, they were a bit jealous, and they were a bit confused, too. They had never heard of a teacher teach like Jesus taught with such authority, you know? Well, here he is in the temple now. Let's listen. My father's temple, his sacred dwelling place. Look what's become of it. My father's house is a house of prayer. But how can I pray in the middle of all this confusion? You find angels, make your prophet elsewhere. Just look at these sacrifices being sold. This is robbery. How can you do this in my father's house? Get out of here! All of you! Get out of here! What authority do you teach and do these things? And I ask you, by what authority did John baptize? We do not know. Then neither am I going to tell you by what authority I teach and do the things I do. Master, we know that you do not lie and that you teach the way of God. Is it right for us to pay taxes to Caesar? Do you have a coin? Whose likeness is on this coin? Why, Caesar's. Then pay to Caesar what is Caesar's, and give to God what is God's. Blasphemy! Oh, woe, you Pharisees, and all you other religious leaders. You are hypocrites. You claim to be so holy with all your long public prayers in the streets, while you are evicting widows from their homes. I thank thee, O oh God, that thou hast not made me as other men of low estate, neither a woman nor a Gentile. And I tell you that this widow has given more than anyone. You give out of your abundance, but she has given all that she has. Blind guides. You strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. Come, friends, let us prepare for Passover. Master, look how the sun shines off those great white stones. What a magnificent sight. Yes, but I tell you this, one day there will not be one stone left standing upon another. But, Master, when will all these things be? Be on the alert, and don't be misled. Many will come claiming to be the Messiah. Some of the people will follow after them. There will be wars. Nation rising up against nation. And earthquakes. And famines and calamities. But this is only the beginning of the end. You yourselves will be turned over to the councils and beaten in the synagogues. But you will also stand before governors and kings to give your testimony to them. The good news of the gospel must be preached to all nations. So take heart. He who endures to the end will be saved. Well, Jesus taught in the temple several days, and all the while those religious leaders were trying to find witnesses against him. Finally, Billy, they found their man. But that's Judas, Grandpa, one of the apostles. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Oh, it was a busy week all around. Jesus was teaching the people and working miracles, and all the while, all those religious leaders were conspiring behind the scenes. And all of Jerusalem 
was preparing for the Feast of the Passover. Why were all the people in Jerusalem? You see, the Feast of the Passover was uh, one of those uh, festival times of the year when all of the men of Israel were invited to come up to Jerusalem and worship God for an entire week. And that's why Jesus and the disciples were there in Jerusalem. Now, by Thursday night, that's the night before the lambs were killed, things had come to a climax. In fact, Jesus and his disciples were preparing for the Passover feast. They were making all their final details. So they met for supper in an upper room. Master, rumors are thick. There's been a plot laid to snare you, and it seems the scribes are looking for someone to betray you. It is one of you who will betray me, Peter. Surely not, Lord. Lord, is it I? Surely not I, Lord. You have spoken. It will be one of you. But very soon you will all stumble and fall away and be offended because of me. But after I am raised to life, I will see you all again in Galilee. Peter, what's the meaning of this? Never, my lord. Peter, if I do not wash your feet, you will have no part of me. Then wash all of me my hands and my head as well. Shalom. 
give you thanks. We may eat. Master, I will never leave you. Peter, even before the cock crows, you will have denied three times that you know me. But I praise God, my Father, that I've had this opportunity to share one more Passover with you in Jerusalem. I have important things to say to you. Judas, go and do quickly what you must do. Speak, my Lord. The time has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. I will only be with you a little longer, but don't be troubled. For I'm going away to prepare a place for you. So that where I am, there you one day may be. But Master, where are you going? And how will we find you? I am the way, the truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. Master. Show us the Father that we might see him with our own eyes. Have I been with you so long that you don't know me? For anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. You have seen the works that I have done. And I tell you this, that anyone who believes in me will be able to do greater things than I. Because I go to the Father. From this night on, whatever you ask in my name, I will grant to you. But, Master, how will all these things be if you were not here with us? I will pray to the Father, and he will send another comforter, the Holy Spirit. And he will teach you and bring to your remembrance everything that I have taught you. For everyone who loves me and does my commandments will see me clearly. For I am the vine. My Father is the vine dresser. And you are the branches. Anyone who lives in me and I in him will bear fruit. But any branch that does not bear fruit, the Father will cut away. You have already been cleansed and pruned because of the things that I have taught you. So live in me. Dwell in me. And let my words continue to dwell in your hearts. And anything that you ask, it shall be done. (laughs) 
love one another. Love one another. That is my command to you. Let us leave this place now. He's our provider, Jehovah Jireh, God of salvation, God of Messiah. And I pray that they might love one another, even as you have loved us, O Lord. Let thy holy word ring true and help them to remember it and live by it always. And let them be strong and pure of heart in your eyes because they have believed in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And then what happened, Grandpa? Well, though they all left the upper room, went out the city gate, went down across the Kidron Valley, up by a brook, and right up to a garden that Jesus knew called Gethsemane. Now, that wasn't all that usual. They went out to pray at night a lot. Just like us, Grandpa. That's right, sweetheart. But this time, Peter took a sword just in case. Here. Stay and pray here, Peter, James, and John. Follow. Pray. Here. You stay here and pray. Father, all things are possible with you, Father. If it be your will, remove this cup from me tonight, Father. But always let it be your will that is done. is weak. Pray that you might not enter into temptation. Pray. The time has come.
I am he. No, Peter! No! Peter! He who lives by the sword dies by the sword. Seize him now! Order. Order. Let us have order. Let us hear what these men have to say. This fellow says that he is able to tear down the sanctuary of the Temple of God. And build it again in three days. <laughs> well, don't you have an answer? Don't you care to respond to what these men testify against you? Who are you? Who do you claim to be? I demand that you swear by the living God and tell us plainly if you're the Christ, the Son of God. I am... Blasphemy! Oh. What, what evidence do we need? No. What is your verdict? Guilty! Guilty! Guilty. Prophesy Guilty. to us Guilty. if you are the Messiah! <laughs> Give us a day! Behold the King of the <laughs> Give us a day of the men who strike you! Take it to Pilate! <laughs> I remember when I first met Jesus Standing on the seashore There I met him Then he said, hey Peter You'll never fish again Come and travel with me And we will fish for men It seems like yesterday Who? Jesus, the Galilean. I don't know who you're talking about. Once out in a boat upon an angry sea, I saw him walk on water and he passed by me. I said, may I come after? Come on to me, but soon I started sinking, and Jesus rescued me. It seems like yesterday, like yesterday. You were with him. I saw you in the marketplace. No! I don't know what you're talking about! Seems like yesterday, like yesterday. Listen to his voice. Even his speech gives him away that he is from Galilee. I tell you, I do not 
know the man! Get out of my way! Looking back on all our time together There was a bond between no one could sever I saw him heal the sick ones He raised men from the dead And lives he changed forever By just the words he said It seems like yesterday Like yesterday Peter, before the cock crows, you will have denied three times that you know me. Are you the king of the Jews? You have spoken. This man plans to tear down the temple. And build it again in three days. We fear for the safety of our most holy place. He rallies all the people unto himself. Under the pretense of being the Messiah, the, the Son of God. That to us is blasphemy. And under our laws, which you, most honorable Pilate, are under authority to administer, this man is subject to the penalty of death. And what do you have to say about this? Oh. Well, man, haven't you heard the accusations against you? Where are you from? He is from Galilee. Galilee? I'd mix the blood of Galileans with their sacrifices. Herod is ruler of Galilee. Let Herod deal with him. Centurion, take him to Herod. Well, well, well. <laughs> I've been waiting a long time to meet you. <laughs> Is it true that you can heal the sick? <laughs> hmm. You are not at all what I had expected. Hmm. They tell me that you can read the minds of men. If it's true, then what am I thinking? <laughs> hmm. I also heard that you were quite popular. Where are your followers? Have they deserted you? <laughs> Perhaps. 
Perhaps you're better at miracles. Can you bring these pillars down? Like Samson of old! <laughs> king of the Jews! Ha! Let us see what this king shall look like! <laughs> Take him back to Pilate. Tell him that this is what heretics for the king for the Jews! <laughs> so here is your king. You have brought before me this man. Accusing him as someone who's corrupted and perverted the people. I search the records. I find in him no offense. Neither did Herod. He's done nothing deserving death. I will see that he is flogged, and then I will release him. <laughs> No fault in him, this king of the Jews. He was Caesar, crucified him. What has he done? What has he done? What has he done? What has he done? As is your custom, I release to you one prisoner. But shall I crucify your king? But shall I crucify your king? It was a dark day in history when this cruel thing was done. This innocent man was condemned to die and made to carry that cruel, cruel cross all the way to Calvary, up that hill called Calvary. Down the Via Dolorosa in Jerusalem's 
that day. The soldiers tried to clear the narrow street, but the crowds pressed in the sea. The man condemned to die on Calvary. Down the Via Dolorosa, all the way of suffering, like a lamb came the Messiah Christ, the King, and he chose to walk that road out of his love for you, for me. Down the Via Dolorosa, all the way. But Grandpa, what did he do to deserve this? Nothing, he darling. loved the little children, I know. Grandpa. I he know. looked out for all the poor. I know. He ached for those who hurt. That's he right. cried when his friend died. That's right. But what did he do to deserve Nothing. this? Nothing, my darling. Nothing at all. Nothing. <laughs> himself he cannot save. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do.
If you are the Christ, why don't you rescue yourself and us? It must be true what they say. You can't be the Messiah. Don't you even fear God. We are here for what we have done, but this man has done nothing wrong. Lord, remember me when you come into your glory. Today, you will be with me in paradise. high priest went to Pilate and insisted, Billy, that Pilate post some guards at the tomb. 
he said that he was worried that some of Jesus' followers would come and steal the body away and then claim that he was still alive. So Pilate did. He posted the guards. And uh, they were there a couple of nights. And uh, then, early, early Sunday morning, something very strange began to happen. Crucified the hope of every heart, the Son of God, the Lord of life, by death had been destroyed. Then in the silence of the tomb, he heard his father's voice. He's alive. He's alive. But Grandpa, he really is alive. Yes. Today. Yes, Lisa, he is alive. He's alive in you, Billy. He's alive in you, Lisa. And he's alive in me. And you know, he can be alive also in you because he is the hope for today. He is the hope for tomorrow. And he's wherever man and woman be found. If you will repent of your sins, 
be baptized and receive the Holy Spirit, He will come into your life tonight. It says in Romans 10, 9, If thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and believe in thine heart that God hath raised Him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. He is truly the promise, the promise for today, the promise for now, the promise forever. has been given to me in heaven and in earth. Go now and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Teach them to observe all things I have commanded you, for I am with you always 